Hello YouTube sidekick here back in my AJS 37 Viggen continuing my journey of discovery of the uh, Swedish Flash. Um, today we're going to go out back out to the ranch and do a little bit more iron bombing uh, with again with uh, slick bombs. But uh, today we're going to uh, explore the nav bombing mode in the Viggen. Uh, before we do that, though, I wanted to take a little minute and, and talk a little bit about um, the uh, bombs that the Vigan drops. Found out some very interesting things in the last little while with the help of some of my viewers on, and uh, on the Discord channel. And particularly, I wanted to thank Bishop for his help in explaining exactly the Swedish philosophy of how the Vigan was expected to be used. Because it does affect... It, well, it affects everything, basically, about the Viggen. Um, so let me just grab the whiteboard here for a sec, and let's talk about particularly how the Mark 71 bombs on the Viggen were expected to be used, because I think it's important. And first of all, again, the thing you need to remember about the AJS-37 Viggen before you remember anything else is that it's Swedish. And that matters because it was an aircraft that was designed to do very specific things that aligned with the Swedish defense doctrine in the 1960s and the 1970s, and then the upgrade in the 1980s. It wasn't designed to do anything else. There was no multi-role capability in the way that a lot of U.S. aircraft that could have been used in a variety of situations um, were developed for. The Viggen was designed to do very specific things and to do them very well, and that included the armament that it was provided with. The only dumb bombs that the Viggen deploys are the Mark 71 high or low drag uh, versions of the same bomb. Now, these Mark 71s are actually equivalent to the U.S. Mark 81 bomb, which is only a 120 kilogram or 250 pound bomb, which means it has about a 45 kilogram or 100 pound payload of, of explosives. So what were the Swedes expecting to take out with this reasonably small bomb? Now, bear in mind, the Viggen can carry up to 16 of these things. So the payload isn't insubstantial, but it isn't large bombs. According to some documents that Bishop dug up and provided for me uh, after he translated them, the primary targets actually for the Mark 71s were, first of all, large landing craft at sea, um, and don't forget, the, the Swedes were very concerned about preventing amphibious invasion. So that's a not, not an insubstantial target, but not one that you typically see in DCS. They were also designed to take out aircraft on the ground, uh, fuel or ammo storage facilities at air bases. They were designed to take out material in harbor, which I basically assume means um, you know, stocks of ammo and fuel uh, basically sitting on the quayside. Uh, in terms of taking, in terms of ground vehicles, they were intended to take out troops and vehicle concentrations and also command posts. The critical thing about this that you will notice is that basically all of these targets are what I would call basically soft targets or basically area targets. The one thing they are not they are not point targets. The bombs were not to be used for point targets. The rockets were. We'll talk about those when we get to the rockets. These are not hard targets. These are relatively soft targets. Again, the rockets were intended for the hard targets. And critically, um, not runways. It was not the Viggen's job to take out uh, runways at enemy air bases. That was the Lanson's job using much larger bombs. Because let's face it, these Mark 71s are not going to do a very efficient job of taking out a runway. That's despite the fact that you'll see a lot of videos in DCS where people line these things up and assume because you lay, lay down a nice long string of them that you should be taking out runways. Well, that's not what the Swedes intended this to be used for. I think this is important. We'll talk about this a little bit more when you get out to the range, but let's, uh, let's get taken off and talk a little bit more about it while we're on our way out there. Okay, here we are in the cockpit. Just a little bit of switchology first. Uh, going to take the weapon mode selector and set it to RR mode, which is this one here. And I am going to set the uh, pattern to the minimum pattern. We'll talk a little bit about more about that as we're getting out there. I think that's about all we need to be getting underway. So we'll just get taxiing out to the runway here.
So one thing I certainly have noticed about the Vigan uh, is that it's a very easy aircraft to taxi, uh, which after coming from flying uh, the Jug and flying even the A4, uh, it's certainly a pleasant change. But um, I realized in reading some of the documentation that Bishop found for me um, that um, actually there's a good reason for that. According to the way uh, the Swedes expected to deploy these things in wartime, they would be flown out they might follow their first missions from their actual hard air bases. After that, they'd go out to uh, a war base, which was um, not necessarily just a roadway, but certainly a much more primitive strip in which the actual aircraft locations, would, uh, sort of dispersal locations, would be sometimes kilometers apart. So you might end up actually taxiing a vegan. Um, basically, <laughs> you would follow a guy with a follow me sign on the back of a motorcycle, and you might actually have to taxi for a kilometer or more. So it's a good thing it's an easy aircraft to drive on the ground. All right, here we are ready to take off. And we are off down the runway like a herd of turtles. So the Vigan, if you actually give it all the beans it's got, is supposed to be able to get off the ground at about 500 to 800 meters. That's why it could be used at these kind of dispersed uh, airports. We're using a standard takeoff air where we're at. Uh, afterburner 2, so it's taking a little bit longer to get off the ground. But we are now away. So let's talk a little bit about the practice we're going to do today. We're going to go out to the iron bombing test range, as we always do. Uh, as you could see from the ground, I've only got eight bombs on board this time, and uh, there's actually a reason for that. Um, I'm really more interested in looking at um, you know, the accuracy of the drops rather than looking for the, the effect. So I'm not dropping all 16 bombs just because it, it makes it harder to figure out exactly what the center of the pattern was. If I could drop one or two bombs at a time, I would, but there's no mode to do that in the Vigan. You drop everything at once, so we're going to drop eight. Now the nav mode that we're going to be practicing today is basically a predicted bombing mode. We're just going to use the predicted location of the waypoint. We're never actually going to sight the target. Uh, we basically get the aircraft pointed at the waypoint, uh, fly level, uh, and then engage the trigger. Uh, and it's a true CCRP uh, bombing mode. The computer will decide when to release the bombs in order to hit the predicted uh, location of the target. So it is important that we have, have the QFE set. Um, it's not so much of an issue here because the target's at the same location, same altitude as the runway. So that's why I actually have to tune it up. But So let's try it the first time here. We're going to drop down. Now I'm not trying to do this tactically. I'm diving down just because um, the mode requires us to be at something like two to three hundred meters off the ground in order for it to, uh, in, you know, in order for it to be used properly. So. Uh, I'm not uh, expecting that this is a fully tactical approach. Fully tactical approach should probably go down below 50 meters and then pop up. Uh, at the very end, we're going to do the whole run here at uh, basically straight and level. So we have to find the target. We've, uh, you can see that our waypoint there on the right-hand side of the console is switched to M3. So we know we're aimed at a target, M for target. And we have to get aimed at the middle of the waypoint. Give it a little bit of gas. The faster we go, the farther out the bombs we can drop. Once we start seeing that line appear, now we can engage the trigger, and we're just holding the trigger, flying towards the waypoint, and waiting until we get the indication that the bombs have dropped. Right about there-ish. Right about there. There they go. And now the other interesting thing is that because we drop the bombs uh, in advance of the target, we can actually pull off to the side, don't actually have to overfly the target. Which, uh, we can get a lot of standoff on that drop, but we can get more, and we'll, uh, by flying higher and by also doing a little bit more toss mode. So we'll take a look at that as we go along. That didn't look like a bad drop. Let's see what we got. Well, uh, it's not great, but given that it's a completely predicted drop. Uh, not a bad accuracy, and as you can see, we, we covered uh, we covered the 50 meter circle reasonably well. Uh, well I'm just going to go around again and, and do that again, see if we can, uh, you know, get a little slightly 
better result. Uh, I think I was a little bit off center on that one. Um, so this nav mode now makes a little bit more sense to me after having seen the description of exactly how these bombs were expected to be used by the Vigan. Um, again, the bombs were not really intended to be um, used against point targets in precision mode. They really were um, intended to be used to effectively cover an area, and to cover an area that contained, you know, fairly soft targets, um, vehicles, uh, not armored vehicles, uh, but vehicles and troops, uh, maybe some light structures um, like those in a command post uh, area, or ammunition dumps, uh, bomb dumps, uh, you know, above ground facilities, not hardened facilities. So really are trying to cover a fairly wide area with these bombs. Um, and the idea here with the nav mode is that even in lousy weather, uh, we would be able to drop these bombs without actually ever seeing the target. And as you'll see, if we decided we could drop them from a little higher, maybe with a little bit of a toss technique, we'd actually get a little bit of standoff, so we wouldn't even have to overfly the target if there was a lot of, for instance, light AAA in the area. So it could be a very effective technique. Now, we don't want to be dropping the bombs in the neighboring grid square, uh, so it is important that we maintain a certain amount of accuracy. So, uh, but you know, the the standard that I usually set when I'm dropping, you know, when I'm dive bombing, I'm trying to get within 25 meters of the target four times out of five. Not really so much important, especially in this kind of uh, bombing mode. So here we go again, I'm just aligning on the uh, the sort of initial point that's going to get us lined up to approach the target from the right direction. That's to, uh, that's. Waypoint B2, and it's going to switch to M3, and now we're approaching the target from the right direction. Again, we're coming in at around 250, well, maybe 300 meters, so maybe a little high for a tactical approach, but enough that we can actually see the target get lined up. Giving it a little bit more gas this time as well. There's our line. We've got the trigger on. And here it comes. And right about there they go. And once again, break hard to the left here. So, still not a lot of standoff achieved there. It looks like we got a little, I think we got a slightly better result there that time. Let's see what. The target information the tracking script gives us. And we'll go around again. So this next one I think we'll do a slightly higher. Okay, let's see how we do. Well, that's actually a better result. Let's see, a little bit uh, around the same altitude, a little bit faster. Um, and you can see the, the slant range standoff distance there. You know, more than a kilometer, uh, but still not all that far. So this time, I think we'll go around and we will um, try a slightly higher altitude approach just to see how much standoff we can get if we take it up a little bit higher, maybe around a thousand meters or so, uh, see how far away from the target we could actually drop the bombs. Okay, let's fast forward just a little bit here so you don't have to spend quite as much time watching me fly around in circles. Uh, all right, so now we're getting lined up. Uh, as you can see, we're at a higher altitude, just passing through the B2 point, and we'll get ourselves lined up on the target again. And once again, I'm not trying to do this in any way, imply that this is in any way a tactical approach. I'm actually flying a little bit slowly just so I can try to figure out exactly how accurate I can make a drop uh, from this altitude, and also get some idea of what the range would be. now. I pumped up the speed a little bit, we could probably get a little bit more standoff, but I'm just going to be interested to see uh, exactly, what, exactly what kind of standoff we get. Before, you know, at, at a thousand feet we were getting around, uh, around a kilometer. Let's see what we do at uh, a little bit more than that. Almost there. And there they go. Okay, yeah, it was definitely a little bit more standoff. Still not, not very long. 
So maybe what we'll do for the next one is we'll actually do the toss bomb technique where we uh, where we release the bombs with an upward pitch, a little bit long, a little bit to the right. Uh, but still in the general target area. Again, if we were trying to hit a fairly large concentration of vehicles or a command post or a harbor uh, key area, uh, I think that, that you know, those bombs probably would have done the trick. Uh, well, let's just see what uh, the target information tracking script says in terms of our accuracy. Okay, uh, 60 meters, not, not great, but not bad. Um, but we dropped at 2,700 feet, and we... Uh, the release point, the slant range at the release point was 2,700 meters, so almost three kilometers out. Uh, if we'd broken uh, hard faster, we probably could have stayed even farther away from the target. But let's go through this uh, one more time. Once again, let's just uh, wind it forward here a little. Okay, once again, lining up on the B2 point. And once we pass through that, we'll head for M3. So we're down a little bit lower again this time. Um, but what I'm going to do is, once I get a little bit closer to the target, basically once I get the target cue on screen, uh, I'm actually going to pull the nose up about 10 degrees and just uh, fly in that nose up uh, attitude until the bombs release. See how, if we can throw the bombs a little bit out in front of the aircraft, see what kind of standoff and accuracy we get when we do that. So, also going to pump up the speed a little bit here. So let's uh, let's give her put some coal to her. Once again, there we got the cue. Now I'm just lifting the nose. Now the problem is, too far I lose the launch cue. I can't tell if I'm accurate in terms of my pointing. Uh, so this isn't a particularly accurate way of delivering the bombs, but you can see that they dropped an awful lot earlier than they did the last time. Watch and see where they go. And not, and not one of the more accurate drops we've done today either. Let's see what the target information tracking script has to say. Again, accuracy is not really the uh, objective, I don't think, with that toss bombing technique. The idea is to give yourself a little bit of standoff. Let's see how we do. Okay, not terribly accurate, but we knew that. You can also see that the bombs were uh, dispersed a little bit more, spread out a little bit more. So if you were trying for a tighter grouping, this wouldn't be something you wanted to do. Dropped to 2,000 feet, and actually uh, the slant range at delivery was 4 kilometers, which is not bad. If we were really trying to avoid getting close to the target area, we probably could have, uh, could have done a better job of staying away from it if we'd broken a little harder once the bombs were gone. Um, but we do sacrifice accuracy to do that. So, anyways, that was uh, a quick look at the nav bombing mode. Um, I hope that you enjoyed this video and you're enjoying this series on the Vigan. As always, please do like and subscribe. And for now, this is going to be Sidekick, signing off.